Hello, I'm Eric. And this is my home in Nashville. And we uh, have a lot of energy saving and, and energy efficient features I'd like to show you. First one here is our solar array, 4.2 kilowatt hour array. We put it here in the front, right on the highway, because we wanted to advertise solar. And people do stop and ask about it. And we've had solar open houses here a few times, where we've had several people come. Why don't we take a look at the back? And you say, and is this a uh, grid tied system, correct? It is grid tied. Under here is some big wires that go back to the meter on the house. Okay, and, and what size was it, did you say? This is 4.2 kilowatt. 4.2 kilowatts, okay. Your total investment in the, in the solar system was 16,000 thereabouts. Yeah. We earned rebates from the federal government and from TVA that brought it down to about 10. So the projected payback time was seven years based on <clears throat> sa estimated savings of around 1,400 to 1,500 per year. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're getting nothing but free energy out there right now. Yeah. It's just pouring in. And this is a, a professionally installed system? This was installed by me and my solar electrician and six volunteers from a community college that were studying solar. I bought the poles locally at a steel manufacturer. I had all of the aluminum here that holds it up sent in on the inter from the internet and I bought all the panels on the internet. So I shopped around and I got good deals on parts. Mm -hmm. And then I did most of the labor myself, including renting a backhoe to dig out all these holes and dig the ditch. And Lightwave recently, like when we had the last open house, they sent someone to sit with us and hand out their flyers but they said they really won't talk to anybody unless they're willing to invest sixty thousand dollars why why is that why is their minimum so high um part of it is that they they tie it to so to power wall we had one tornado which leveled the array it came out flat but it didn't blow down i just straightened them out and tightened the bolts and it went back to back to work. Uh, it's been through two tornadoes, in fact, but the, the uh, aluminum is rated at 125 miles per hour wind. Wow, okay. An array like this costs more, about 15% more than to put it on your roof because of all these poles and cement and the underground line, but it gets about 10% more solar. And in, in our case, it would have been we have to cut down some really big trees or sacrifice the amount of solar that we get. We have a solar operated fan. When the sun hits that panel, it turns this fan on uh, to ventilate. What does that do exactly? It sort of expels hot air from the it greenhouse? It pulls hot air out of the greenhouse, uh, especially, we need that especially in the warmer months. So it looks like it's a 20 watt panel or so yeah, connected little, to just a, a DC fan? Exactly. And it just, the fan runs when, when sun is hitting the when panel. When the sun hits it, yep. And you said it's currently not, the fan is currently not working. It just, uh, it's not, not coming on. I gotta play with it a little bit. We have to get in there and take out some of the trees that have grown up inside the greenhouse, but that's another story. And on the roof is the solar water heater. Uh, I got the panel used off of somebody else's roof when they wanted to do a new roof and were tired of having this thing. Was that a DIY project or did you have a professional come in and do I that? did all this myself. Got the, the little solar panel on, online and did all the piping and all the wiring. It supplies, we think, about 75% of the hot water for this house. Wow, that's great. Why did the people, the previous owners, want to get rid of them? because they were tired of the pumps breaking. These were great big electric pumps, or two of them. And that's what they used to put in in the, in the 80s and the 90s uh, when they ran solar hot water. And so you simplified it by putting in just a simple 12 volt DC pump that you connected to the solar panel. Yep, and it, like I say, it's about this big and has almost no moving parts inside of it. So it's, it's never broken down. It's been up there 20 years. 
just I need keeps... to know the brand of that pump. I've been, <laughs> I've been wanting to find a good uh, 12 volt pump. I don't remember, but you can look at it. Yeah. This panel, uh, I hit it with my trailer when it was full of trail firewood. It did this and it still works just fine. So I've left it alone. Even though I have another one I could replace it with, I said, why bother? Because if I move it, it might, the glass might fall off of it, but like it is, it's fine. Have you noticed any, any drop in power output? None at all. It powers, it, it is charging a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery inside the house. And that is my solar generator in case of power outage. I can plug into the inverter that's on the back and run my refrigerator and a few lights in case we don't have power for a while. How did you get it into the house? It looks like you drilled a, a hole in There's the... There's a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you just drilled a hole straight through and then fed the wires through and then, and then filled it with a little bit of foam or It's a or rubber plug. A rubber plug. Thinks I'm a stranger. Come on, baby. There we go. So this will charge the car in about eight hours from nothing to full. A Tesla supercharger takes about half an hour to fill it back up. I'll demonstrate one of the shades. Manually operated by pull strings. So on a sunny, warm day like today, we keep it shut. On the top of these shades is silver foil, and it's one inch of styrofoam to reflect the heat back out. And come out onto our deck. And is this the, the structure with the tankless water heater? Yep, there Which it is. Which is right there. Is that, you said it's gas? Or? It's gas. Okay. How, how does it work? I, I don't have a tankless water heater. Um, it just, it's an on-demand deal. You turn on the hot water, you can watch this little number go up. Or I guess I should say, how well does it work? It works really well. You see how fast it climbs in temperature. So you turned on the hot water. It was at what started at what? 75. 75. Room temperature. So and here it is at 120 in a matter of seconds. And you turn it on and it quits. So you don't ever, never have to store any water and, and you never run out. Yep, that's, that's hot water. So you would recommend the tankless water here? Oh, yeah. I have three of them. You have three of them? The one in the big, in the barn, yeah. this one, and the tiny house. KC, like the initials KC? Like in K K Kansas City. Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the golf cart that I used to have needed to be charged all the time because it was poor batteries. They were old. Underneath the seat is the battery array. There's six volt batteries or okay. 36 volt total so what do you, how do you charge the batteries with the solar panel i made this little arrangement right here and it goes through a charge controller on the wall uh, when i park it over here i, I, I plug it in let me move behind this. this wood there's the solar charge controller the battery goes below 47 volts I bring it over here and plug it into that array or that one panel to 210. If they want to save on energy but not do PV solar, what which of the projects or you know devices that you have would you recommend to people? The tankless water heaters is is real easy and obvious. I was amazed how hot it got. How quick or how, how quickly. quickly it got hot. It's they work really fast. It was like fast. less than 30 seconds. Yeah. And there's nothing wasted. It's not sitting in a tank in the basement losing heat to the atmosphere. Did you see any measurable energy savings? Oh yeah. The electric bill goes down when you do it this way. Same thing with the heat pumps. We have the, the three heat pumps. Um, it costs probably about half 
what it would cost to have a gas furnace or an electric heat source. Is solar worth it? If you're only interested in saving money, maybe not in this area. I mean, we got a huge incentive package, you know, $1,000 up front plus 12 cents a kilowatt hour per kilowatt you produce. Um, and it cut our utility bills to zero. They took that all away. And in fact, they're now, I think they're offering less than parity where they will pay you less than you're paying them. So if you export any <coughs> energy to the grid, it's not rather worth. than paying you 11 cents per kilowatt hour, which is what the current rate is, at least that's, I think, what I pay. So. I think they're paying six. So they're paying roughly half yeah. of, what, of what the residential so rate they're, is. They're basically ripping off the solar producers like me. But if you have other goals in mind, like reducing your carbon footprint, yes. I, you know, I had to have a solar system and I had to have a, an electric car. It's just part of my, be my being. Is there anything else you'd like to say, uh, that you'd like to talk about that we didn't touch on in the tour or, or in this conversation? Come see us. We're open to tours. If people want to come see what we've done here. I think I'll leave it at that. Well, thank okay. you so much, Eric, for thank letting you. me come by and, and tour your incredible property. Appreciate it. It was fun. <laughs>